Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ryan, and today I'm joined by Nerdarchist Dave. Ted. And we have a GM91 from GM Gladius, and it's about bringing down the barbarian. If you have a GM 901, you can submit those over to us at nerdarchy.com or on the GM 901 section of our forums. All right, so we have a barbarian with a cloak of protection, AC 19, six level, I believe. And apparently, the uh, GM Gladius wants to put a hurting on this barbarian without TPKing the party. Right. Or now, severely injuring the rest of the party. I had answered uh, this question along with some of our other uh, fans over on. Um, the comments of a video. I don't know if it was this one specifically, but it was very similar. Kind of if like not. this, yeah. Uh, and it's like, well, depends on how you want to handle it. Like, so barbarian, well, you attack his mental stats. Mm. That doesn't require an AO AOE. You can also use him as a weapon against the party. Mm -hmm. Charm his ass. Use suggestion on him. You know, any of that stuff. All that horrendous scariness now is <laughs> turned back around at the party. Um, or, you know, if you don't want to be that mean to the rest of the party, sit him out of combat for a round while he's raging. Uh, Through various means, like a whole person or other... You know, and then he comes out of his rage, so you wasted his rage. Uh, if he Far ha less menacing not being enraged, yeah. Yeah, if he had happened to be a frenzied berserker, then... Level of exhaustion? Then he has a level of exhaustion. Well, if, if he, he frenzied, he, yeah. Yeah, if he frenzied. Um, although I, I think it might be a little bit tougher because I think those guys are immune to charm and frighten at 6th level, mm. uh, which is one of the cool things about the frenzied berserker. Mm. I, is whole, whole person is still technically a charm? I don't think so. I would have to see. But, yeah, there's probably some other ways to, to do it that don't... Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think so because I don't think it's... It doesn't uh, give you the charmed condition, right? Mm. Which right. is you're you're uh, restrained. Yeah. So you know th that that was key. You got to attack the charisma, wisdom, and intelligence. You know, setting them against the party, and they have to figure out. Then it's their problem of figuring out how to bring down the barbarian mm. to su you know, survive the encounter. They might even have to just flee. Yeah. I mean, here's another thing you could do is um, so th they're fighting a, a battlefront here. Well, there's a threat that's a lot farther further away that's like maybe it's a spellcaster or a shaman or whatever it was. And so they dispatch with that. They have to expend some distance to even get to them. If the barbarian doesn't get attacked for a round, like it just so happens that it works out that way, then they they lose their rage in that point too, to just trying to get to the, the thing that's yeah, a threat. Yeah, they have so to if they're further around. away than a, than a round uh, away, um, or if they don't, yeah, if they don't attack or whatever, figure out some way to, to make that work. Like, it might just be a matter of, like, him, like, telling another party member to hit him or something like that. No, no, they have to be the, the attacking. I think it's attacked or attacking, no? Uh, I thought they have to make attacks. Okay. Right. So, you know, so there's ways to bring him out of the rage. And as far as, I don't know, a 19 armor class doesn't seem that hard to hit me, especially if, you, if you're if you using things that get advantage. Mm -hmm. Right. And that that's another thing. If you if you put a horde of creatures together and, okay, we've got, I've got 20 of them, 10 of them are going to make attacks, the other ones are, are doing the aid at aid another, so the other ones are attacking with advantage. So you can't you can't get twenty creatures around a barbarian, but you can get eight. That means you're getting four attacks with with advantage. There you go. That'll that'll do it. Well, to a certain extent too, I would even allow creatures that are a little bit further away to use the aid action, mm -hmm. because like they can be yelling and throwing things and, That's true. and doing other things to try and distract them. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, like, yeah, if you're into the point where you're making 10 or 12 attacks on the Barbarian, however that might work out, um, it, it, maybe it's things that, that charge him and then rush past, so he gets one reaction to attack <coughs> the thing. Um, by 6th level, the Barbarian has two attacks around, right? Yes. So, all right, if if he's managed to, to get cleave, he might be able to take out three things in a round. Yeah. All right, well, if you've got him surrounded... Even kobolds are gonna start start doing dealing some damage at that point in time, if, if they're if they're eating each other. All right, you can only take out three of them around. Yeah, by the maths, you're you're gonna be taking some damage, you, and you could be 
targeting that barbarian with with effects mm -hmm. um, because he's the obvious threat too. That becomes the same story of Bloodfang, where like, oh, this guy is it's like Brock Samson from uh, from Adventure Brothers. Like, yeah. oh my God, he's a Swedish murder machine. So when you're seeing that happen, like obviously the the monsters are gonna do something to, to being intelligent or do something to want to bring him down, whatever right. that is. Um, slow, things that might slow him down or this or that. Slow spells, maybe. Um, so you can have a lot of targeted damage by... It's like... To, to the player, it might look like the DM's picking on your character because they, because they are. Like, if you're an overwhelming threat, people respond to the overwhelming threat. And the other thing is, you know, you could, you could begin... Uh, an ambush. You could attack with advantage because the par the party isn't aware that combat is happening. Well, if there's you know, half a dozen attackers from from the flanks that all that are all attacking, all right, you get you get the combat starting off with the, the party taking damage or the barbarian taking taking some damage. So it's, it's a way to you know mitigate some of some of it. And, you know, the, it's kind of like the bar the barbarian, you know, it, part of his job is to draw the aggro along with the fighters and mm -hmm. the paladins. Their job is to keep the heat off the rest of the party so that they can do their job. Right. So, you know, it, it seems like the GM's getting frustrated because they're not able to <laughs> drop the barbarian. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I don't know if that's necessarily should be your goal. You know, you're trying to tell a story, have interesting encounters. Um, you know, you could also, as we've said in other videos, use terrain hazards, traps, th things of that nature. Because if the barbarian is taking the front on everything, he's gonna he's gonna take the brunt of it anyway. Right. And then you're also he's he has to make deck saving throws or maybe constitution saving throws. Not that that's gonna be really hard, so hard for the barbarian, but it might be an easier way to go than attacking the armor class per se. Yeah, right. and you know, an encounter with like Al brute strength the uh, the brute strength character um, no like it'd be pretty close running with a couple of hill giants you know like throwing boulders um, they probably are gonna get a well so with with the reactions for the attack does reach affect that influence that anymore or is that yeah. not even a factor so only when leaving okay so the barbarians gonna rush to do the fight I don't know what the composition of the other the other player characters are but a couple of hill giants wailing on the the barbarian. That's going to be a strain on his his uh, his hit points, even if he is taking half damage. Sixth so. level. I don't know if it'd be a couple of hill giants quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could do all hill giant. But um, what that did make me think about too is that there's definitely hill giant few orcs. You know, there's definitely some limitations too as far as. Uh, the barbarian is a melee fighter. You know, if you range use, is, range attacks. Yeah. You know, sure, they're not hitting, but that's okay because again, you don't want the rest of the party to be totally wiped out either. Uh, so, so maybe they focus on the barbarian because he's coming first and he's the closest, and he looks the craziest and angriest. <laughs> so, you know, so he's again, he's drawing the aggro. Like that guy, that guy with all the scars and big muscles is coming right for me. The big sword, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, yeah, I'm a little bit wary about that. Archers fire at that guy first. Yeah, take him out. Especially if he's moving that much faster than everybody else. Right. Like, ah, we can worry about them when they get here. Yeah, you also want to think about, like, what's the party's default marching order? Because if he's taking the spearhead, like, some ambush monsters might come from the rear, but some still might attack from the front. Uh, so it depends. Like, and if you're, that's a good way to mess with party uh, parties to make them think about how they form out themselves in general. Like, some people only put their, their strong characters in the front, and then they, like, leave their, like, wizard and trailing in the, in the rear guard. <laughs> and so, like, it's a good way to, like, either mess with the party on that front or um, or you can hit their spearhead which well, might here's, be the barbarian here, here's the pro tip man there is only one way for to have a marching order and that is clearly clearly the flying V mm. quack quack <laughs> quack yeah. Well, I mean, the real pro tip is is that it's like you want you want to sandwich the party with pretty strong uh, characters, and if you have uh, still decent capacities to do so, then you have another decent character in the middle. So, party of five, your two weaklings, kind of in the in the next to the the center between the, the two. Protect your wizard at all costs. To protect protect uh, the mage and the cleric. Last time we had a marching order in this guy's game, I was I was in the middle. And it I didn't got work out. So I got to snuck it down. <laughs> well, I mean, there's always belay drive buys that are a hard thing to, to, to deal with. So what do you guys think? Do you have any uh, any further tips for GM Gladius that we might 
that wound up missing, why don't you put them in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, even subscribe. You can check us out over on Instagram. Hang out with us over at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.